So welcome to another video with inside the Digital Pros No Code Academy. And in this particular one, we're gonna make it super, super simple to add real-time capabilities to your Flutterflow application if you are using Superbase. This reusable technique you can apply straight away with inside your own project. So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's get cracking. Okay, so before we get into the main walkthrough part of this video showing you how to enable this with inside your own projects, let's have a look and see what we're trying to achieve in this particular video. So we've got two very, very similar applications here. The one on the left is a traditional sort of Flutterflow application that has a connection to Superbase. It's pulling some records from one database table. The one on the right hand side, again, is super similar. The only difference is that it has some real time capabilities set up with inside the project itself. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the traditional application here and I'm going to hit the simulate new a booking button and what you'll see on the right hand side you'll see that particular record get created but of course I'm gonna to have to force a refresh on this one here so I'm gonna hit the simulate new booking button you'll see here that that new row has just instantly appeared and of course this little timestamp here that's just also updated as well so I've got two areas of this application that's monitoring for these real-time changes but of course on the old sort of fashion way of doing things we then have to hit the refresh button to then see that record get created and of course this timestamp updated so of course you can do deletions, you can do updates, and you'll see all of those re real-time capabilities play out with inside your Flutterflow application. So let's now walk through, let's take a bog standard kind of application here, which is gonna be very similar to something you've probably got in your own projects. And I'll show you how to kind of make some small changes to enable these real-time capabilities. Let's get over and do that now. Okay, so in this particular video, then I'm going to make some assumptions that you've got your own super basic project set up in Flutterflow. It's a pretty standard setup. And this is kind of what I've got here It's really just kind of doing some regular kind of queries. You can see here, I've got, I've got this container here that's making its own query and pulling out a single row and displaying the results of that within inside the container. And then just down here, I've also got kind of like a list view that again, it's just got a kind of a back end query that's set up again, nothing special here. It's just pulling into a table called appointments, and it's pulling out the data database records and it's passing the record itself into a particular component and that component is really just kind of linked to some kind of fields within inside our database so pretty well much it's very very standard okay so what do we need to do then to enable our application to work in real time. Well, firstly, we're gonna to have to create some custom actions. Now, these custom actions are fully reusable, so you can use these throughout your whole application. So if you want to kind of enable real time capabilities to kind of different tables within inside your application, you'd be able to use these custom actions to do that. So let's now head over and start creating those now. So we're gonna need two custom actions. Move over to the custom code section here on the left-hand side, where it says custom actions, this is where they're gonna kind of be placed. So hit add, now the first custom action that we're going to create is one called a subscribe. So what this custom action will do is it will perform a subscription to a particular kind of table with inside your application and it will monitor for those real-time changes. When those real-time changes occur, then we're going to be creating a callback back to the main action flow editor with inside our application to then do something that we want it to do. And we'll come back to that very shortly. Let's first create the subscription here. So on the right-hand side, we're not going to return any particular value, but we need to define some arguments here. So on the add uh, arguments here, just choose that. And this one's going to be called table like that and it's just going to be a string we're going to pass in a string there just hit add arguments there. take the nullable off as well now this one's just going to call this one a callback action like that now with the type we just need to move down here to action we'll take off the nullable option there and that is good so if i now move over up here to then this particular option here the boilerplate code i can now copy this to the editor now, what I need you to do is if you check the link in the description, you're going to gain access then to the code that we need to put actually into here. So you better copy and paste that directly in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that code now and I'm just going to overwrite everything that I've got there because the kind of the, the signature there of the function is exactly as we created. So this is really what it's doing here. We are going to basically pass in our table name and then we've got this callback action. And then, of course, what we're doing here is we're going to use some libraries which are already uh, sort of passed in and used with inside of Flutterflow itself to kind of create that subscription to the table that we're going to kind of pass in here by its name. 
Now what it's going to do is it's going to monitor for those particular changes and, and at this particular point here it's going to then kind of invoke the callback. This is kind of the callback that we're, we're going to pass in. Of course that's just going to be a series of actions that we can create with inside the action flow editor. Now incidentally of course there are some little enhancements you can make to this just to call that out here. At the moment I'm looking for changes all events here. So you can see here that I'm looking for inserts, updates, deletes etc there of course. If you would just like to monitor for uh, anybody who's actually just inserting data by, uh, sort of uh, data then of course you can just change that then to inserts and it will only listen for those particular changes. So once that is done, we can just go up to the top here, just hit the save action. We just need to compile at it as well. And of course, that's going to take a few moments to compile. Just while it's doing that, you just need to make sure that you also include this particular kind of import here. That's quite important, even though the Flutterflow is giving me a little bit of a kind of a squiggly line there warning me, but actually it is needed. So you need to make sure you include that in there as well. Okay, so the function's all compiled there. I've got the green tick. Let's now create the next one. So let's just go up to the add. Let's create our action. And this time it's going to be called unsubscribe like that. Now, of course, we need to set some arguments up here. The only one that we need to create here again is the table. We need to pass in our table name. We just want to take the little nullable off there. Move over to this particular boilerplate code here. Copy that to the editor. And of course, again, the link in the description for this particular function. I'm just going to kind of paste that over the top here. If I just paste that in there. And this is effectively all that it's doing is we're passing in the table name here. And really all it's doing is, is I'm subscribing from any particular updates that's being applied to that particular table. And we're going to need to use this because we're going to want to make sure that um before we kind of set up any kind of subscription and listen for changes to the table, we want to make sure we unsubscribe them if they are already created there. So we'll we'll invoke this a custom function very, very shortly. Once that's done, hit the save function. Let's compile once more up here. Let's leave that to do its thing. It always takes a, a kind of a minute or two to do the compilation, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we're all done with our custom actions, all compiled. Let's now move into the next bit where we're going to start setting up these custom actions to kind of then do that subscription to our database table. Let's go and head over and do that now. Excuse the interruption in your learning, but I just wanted to reach out to you to let you know about the Digital Pros No Code Academy. This particular private community is fantastic. It's got all of my training content there, lots of written articles, question and answers, a code library, lots of topics around the no code space and a fantastic community. Please do check the link in the description. It'd be great to have you part of the community. Okay, so here we are then back on the homepage of my application. We now need to move into the very top level here, the homepage. Let's open up the action flow editor to here, just hit open. I've got my single action that I've got in this particular project. Of course, you might not have any actions in yours. Let's now start invoking these custom actions. So the first one I'm going to hit is the plus here. I'm going to go to add action and I'm going to move down to custom actions on the right here. And I'm firstly going to hit the unsubscribe. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, hang on, why do you need to unsubscribe before you subscribed? Well, the quite simple reason is that we want to make sure that we don't have any subscriptions to any real time updates to any of our database tables. So by doing that, we're kind of enforcing it right off the bat and we're clearing any subscriptions that we've currently got. So the table that I've got with inside my super base database is called appointments. So I'm just going to simply type in appointments here and of course the custom action will pick that up. So that's all in place. We hit the little plus again, hit add action. This time we just want to kind of put a bit of a, a wait here because what will happen is it will take a moment to kind of perform the, the kind of the unsubscription. We just want to make sure that it definitely happens. So let's put a, a wait in here. I'm just going to put a thousand in here. You can probably probably maybe just slightly reduce that, but I'm just going to keep a thousand in here for safe measure. And of course, I'm going to hit the plus, hit add action. And this is where we're going to need to do the subscription. So move down to custom actions here, choose subscribe. And of course, we now need to fill these particular details in. Of course, my table is called appointments like that. And then here is the callback. This is what's going to kind of happen when we see those kind of real time events uh, kind of occur with inside our database. We hit the open. And this is where we can now define a number of series of actions when those callbacks occur. Now, if you recall on my particular example here, I've got a list view and I've got a container. They've both got database queries associated with them. So of course, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to refresh them. So choose add action. Just do a search here for refresh here. And I'm going to say refresh a database request. I'm going to choose the widget. So here is my real time list view. I'm just going to select that. I'm not going to put anything more in here. Hit the plus, hit add action. Let's just do another refresh here. Uh, refresh database request select the uh, the option there and choose the latest booking container which is what it's called in my particular project itself so that's all there so just hit the close and that is 
all that we need to do now in terms of getting the kind of the real time updates are kind of happening. So before we fire this up in test mode, there's one final thing that we need to make sure that we do, and that is enable real time on our database table that we are connecting to here. So let's just head over to Superbase now. You can see here, this is the table that I've got in this particular example. And all I've just made sure that I've done is I've clicked on the real time option up here. And of course you can toggle this on or off. So just make sure you do that with the table that you are using with inside your project. Now with that all set, let's fire up in test mode and let's see if this all works. Okay, so here we are then running in test mode. Let's hit the simulate new booking button, which of course is just gonna create that record in our database. Let's hit that. And then magically, there it is. Our real time update must have occurred because we've got no refresh action or anything like that under there. And you've seen everything play out just as you would expect. So there you go. That's pretty straightforward. You should be able to implement that in your own projects without any trouble whatsoever. And so hopefully you've enjoyed this particular video. There is so much more on my channel when it comes to using Flutterflow, Superbase, and the likes of Buildship. And of course, there's so much more with inside the Digital Pros No Code Academy as well. So please do head over there if you're looking to build your knowledge with inside Flutterflow and it's a fantastic community there as well. So please do like the video, please do subscribe to the channel if you're watching this on YouTube and until the next video, I'll see you soon.